Hi there. Welcome to this week's episode of Waste 360's Unpacking Recycling with Charlotte. My name is Charlotte Dreisen and I am really excited to be here today talking all things organics recycling with you. We have dove into a couple of adjacent topics the past few weeks talking about bioplastics and compostable packaging and have started to unpeel the layers of composting. But we're going to talk about organics recycling more broadly and the broader suite of materials that you can recycle organically, which basically means compost compost or anaerobically digest or manage through other organics channels, not just a composting facility. That is one of many great options, but we have a whole suite of organic materials that we as people generate and a lot of different pathways at our disposal to manage them sustainably. So we're going to touch on composting, of course, but also talk through some of the other channels we have yet to discuss. It is a topic that I'm getting more and more questions about from folks, and it's exciting to see a really big growth of infrastructure across the country especially when it's spurred by legislation. So a topic that's timely and that we're eager to get into. But to start off with, what are organic materials? What do we consider them? How much do we generate of them? Suffice it to say that organic materials are organic. They grew in the ground. They're produced from materials that were grown in the ground. They aren't synthetic. They generally mean food waste, yard waste, paper, wood, uh, products that you know really have you know derived from agriculture or were manufactured from agricultural products. That's that's generally what we mean. Um, people say organic. And, and tend to, to mean all sorts of different things. So it is admittedly a bit of a vague term that people use sometimes. You'll often hear compostables kind of used interchangeably, but some organic materials might not be a good fit for composting or not all compostable uh, kind of management systems. Um, so just helpful to kind of use that as a starting point. But out of the total amount of municipal solid waste that we generate each year, we generate about 300 million tons in the US of municipal solid waste. Waste. The second biggest category of it, of MSW, is food waste. So about 23% is paper, much of which is, is compostable and organic. Uh, we can manage it through one of the organics recycling pathways that we have available to us. Food waste is another really big portion. It makes up about 21%. So about 67 million tons of paper total, about 63 million tons of food waste total. In addition to that, we have a really meaningful chunk of yard waste that we generate, about 12%, and wood waste as well. You know, whether it's decking or something like a pair of chopsticks, we generate a lot of wood, um, you know, throughout our supply chain and in our municipal solid waste as well. Um, much of it is uh, is something that we can recover through organics recycling, a lot of which is a really good fit also for donation or reuse. So something like a, you know, wood dresser has a lot of value in it, is a best, you know, best directed to donation and reuse rather than to being recycled. Um, something on the other hand, like a bamboo fork or uh, a pair of wooden chopsticks is a really great pick for something to be organically recycled. And we've touched on this a little bit, but the reason that organic materials are so important for us to get out of the waste stream and get out of landfill and, of course, waste to energy as well, is that when in a landfill, organic materials generate methane, which is a really potent greenhouse gas. It is many, many times more potent of a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. So it is a priority material for us to get out of landfill. Of course, we don't want any material in landfill, but something like plastic isn't going to degrade and generate methane, for instance, or aluminum or something else that like glass that's inert, but organic materials, whether it's wood or food or paper or yard waste, is going to break down and generate methane, which is really problematic. So with the climate in mind, we want to, you know, we want to be getting the most climate sensitive materials that are ripe to generate methane out of landfills and really prioritize that in our zero waste efforts as a whole. The reason they generate methane in a landfill is because they're breaking down in an oxygen poor environment or what we call an anaerobic environment. So microbes that exist are starting to break down and consume that organic material. They generate methane as um, as a consequence of that is a byproduct of that process. Now, it's really problematic when it's in a landfill because it's not contained. It's just emitting into the atmosphere. Some landfills have methane capture equipment, which is really helpful. Um, it certainly is better than not having any, but it doesn't really you know, come into effect and start working very well until a landfill is capped and closed. So if you think about a landfill that has a lifespan of 20, 30, 50 years, it's going to be emitting methane throughout its entire life. And then once it's capped at the end of its life, you're really gonna be able to start capturing that methane. 
So until that point, it's not going to be something that's very efficient. It's not going to be something that's working well. And even when it does work well, kind of once the landfill is capped and that methane is being captured, there are methane leaks that are observed in, in landfills as a whole. So it's not something that works well today. And definitely most landfills or many landfills don't have that equipment installed at all. But we can harness that same kind of microbial activity where microbes break down organic material and generate methane in a contained, intentional, captured way at an anaerobic digestion facility to generate biogas. So while we've talked a lot about composting and we, we've talked a little bit about how they use aerobic microbes or microbes that like oxygen to, to break down the material using those very specific kind of composting microbes and processes to keep generating um, oxygen rich environments for microbes to break down food waste, compostable packaging, yard waste materials that we can compost. In an anaerobic digestion facility, we basically are relying on those same or similar microbes that don't like oxygen, that work well without oxygen. And we're gonna generate methane, but we're gonna capture it. And we're gonna use it for productive end uses like sustainable fuel and generating fertilizer and solid digestate as an end process. So it basically looks like a big metal tank that this takes place in. It kind of looks like, you know, if you're ever driving down the highway and see a big, you know, water, uh, metal water tower, um, that's more or less what an anaerobic digestion facility looks like. You take food waste or, um, you know, human waste biosolids um, that can be anaerobically digested and you turn it into a slurry, a uniform product, and you kind of tailor the specifications of your anaerobic digestion system based on the amount and kind of food waste or material that you're processing. And then you pump it into the big metal tank and without oxygen and an oxygen uh, you know poor environment have those microbes go to work generate methane and you convert it into biogas which you can use as a fuel you can turn it into electricity um, a lot of places uh, for instance in Italy Italy is a huge leader in anaerobic digestion and anaerobic digestion technology Venice is starting to power its water taxis with liquid natural gas derived from biogas from composting food waste and manure in the countryside which is really cool to see so we can use anaerobic digestion to create really useful end products, fuel, sustainable fuel and sustainable electricity, as well as solid and liquid fertilizer. So not only are you generating the biogas or electricity um, to, uh, to generate power, but you can also and also create through anaerobic digestion solid fertilizer that can be used for agricultural applications as well as liquid fertilizer that's something really easy to apply and spray in farms and agricultural operations as well. One of the trade-offs, though, is that anaerobic digestion facilities and the microbes that work in them have a really hard time dealing with solid items. So all of the material, the food waste and the biosolids need to be pumped into a pretty uniform liquid slurry, which makes it a really challenging environment for compostable packaging or yard waste to break down in. So depending on the organic material that you're hoping to process, a different technology is likely the best fit. If you have a ton of food waste, if you have a commercial food waste ban for restaurants, it's a really uniform form food waste product, not a lot of compostable packaging or yard waste in the picture. Anaerobic digestion might be the most intuitive fit for you. If on the contrast, you have a ton of yard waste, you have a lot of people mowing lawns, you have a lot of compostable packaging going on, composting might be the best fit for you. And they can also work in tandem. So a lot of places pursue both. And depending on the kind of feedstock or material that you have, direct one to, to whichever facility. That solid fertilizer that anaerobic digestion also produces can also then be composted and turned into a compost product, which is of course also really valuable. Valuable. Compost is an invaluable soil amendment that helps soil retain nutrients and moisture and rebuild soils, knowing that global soil loss is taking place at a really rapid rate. Both anaerobic digestion and composting create really valuable end products. It's mostly a matter of which kind of facility is the best fit for your material and often, of course, where your facility might need to be located. So an anaerobic digestion facility, because it's kind of usually a, a somewhat tall vertical structure, almost like a water tower, you can put it on really small lots. It doesn't need a huge amount of land to be able to process a lot of material. This can be really helpful for denser urban areas where land is in really short supply or is really expensive to purchase. It can be really difficult to find a composting facility or to have a composting facility sited within a city that would be big enough to process all of the food waste that it creates. But anaerobic digestion facilities, because they're more space efficient, 
are often something that's easier to cite in terms of the space it consumes, closer to where that food waste or human waste or, uh, or anaerobically digestible material is being located. But conversely, because it's a more you know technically involved high tech system, the capital cost that goes in up front is usually a lot higher than the capital cost of a composting facility. So while you need more land for composting, you need less capital up front to set up that facility. The trade off for anaerobic digestion is that it's a lot less of a space hog, but of course requires a lot more capital to, to kind of build up on the front end and create the facility to operate. Uh, a couple other considerations that that then impacts is, you know, the cost of land itself. If you can manage all of your food waste on a, you know, five acre lot and through anaerobic digestion, and you could only manage it through composting on a 20 acre lot, you know, depending on how much your land costs and how close you can site that facility might also inform the equation, which then impacts trucking and transportation costs. So whether you'll only need to drive the food waste or uh, anaerobically digestible material, you know, two miles or 20 miles or is it you know 100 miles that you might need to take it uh you know that will also play play a role in in the equation of what kind of facility makes the most sense for you we are really lucky in the united states to be having an enormous growth of both anaerobic digestion and composting facilities so in many places in the us you now can choose from both kinds of technologies. And in a lot of cases, you'll really need multiple solutions for the food waste and organic material that you're generating in a city. Because we know that some folks, you know, maybe like a uh, hospital are generating a ton of food waste, but maybe not so much yard waste or compostable packaging. And it really is a great fit for anaerobic digestion. For others, like a fast casual restaurant or a home, maybe you are generating both a lot of yard waste and compostable packaging and composting is really a bet, you know, the best fit for you. But we aren't only thinking about where food waste needs to go within a city or a state. We're also thinking about where all of the organic material that we need to manage goes, including our biosolids. So humans produce human waste that gets directed through a wastewater treatment facility in, in a city. And on average, generally, almost always, a city's biggest energy consumer is its wastewater treatment facility. Wastewater treatment is a humongously energy intensive process. And co-locating an anaerobic digestion facility on the same site and processing your biosolids through an anaerobic digester at the same time it's being treated is often a really good way to get kind of two birds with one stone. So you're not only generating biogas and sustainable energy, the electricity that the facility needs to operate, but you're also reducing the amount of kind of solid material that's coming out of your wastewater treatment facility by about half, which is really important when you're a city generating a ton of biosolids. Um, that solid product then can be used for land application, but one of the trade-offs of doing that, of digesting the, the human waste and biosolids at a wastewater treatment facility is that there's a lot of toxic elements that tend to come up in wastewater and in human waste, like pharmaceutical residue, for instance. So one wants to be really careful about where you are directing the output and solid digestate of wastewater treatment facilities, and it might not be a logical fit for all agricultural applications, but it might be appropriate to land apply for some. And of course, in a best case scenario, material will be getting not only digested, but also composted. And that composting process can really alleviate some of those toxic concerns of the material that's being directed from a wastewater treatment facility through an anaerobic digester. And then what needs to happen next out of the, the liquid and solid fertilizer that you create. Now to end on, I'm gonna touch on one of the most frequently asked questions that I get from folks who are wanting to manage their organics and in particular their food waste in a sustainable way. And assuming that they have multiple options available to them, like in much of the country, they now have different channels they can bring food waste. They wanna know which is best. So should I bring it to a dedicated organics drop-off program that is going to be either composted or anaerobically digested? Or knowing that my wastewater treatment facility might have an anaerobic digester, let's say you're in DC, so you do, can I just put my food waste down the sink? Will that be just as sustainable as a solution as bringing that food waste to an organics drop-off if it's going to be composted and anaerobically digested down the line through that dedicated channel anyway? And the answer that, that I think makes the most sense is yes. If you have a drop-off available to you to bring your food waste, you know, whether it's gonna be anaerobically digested or composted directly, that is the safest route for sure. We wanna create the highest quality end product, whether it's compost or biogas and digestate as we can. And channeling food waste to the wastewater treatment system 
where it's going to be digested and create digestate is one opportunity. It's better than going to a landfill. But of course, we know because there are some kind of toxic concerns and pharmaceutical concerns of the digestate that comes out of wastewater treatment facilities, if we can ensure it's going to be kind of in its own happy channel with other food waste and yard waste and potentially compostable packaging and get it to a composting facility or an AD anaerobic digestion facility on its own, it's best to do that instead of mixing the food waste that you put down the drain with kind of that more contaminated biosolid and, and human waste piece that, that might compromise the quality of that end product. The other consideration to take in mind is that a lot of cities have really old, really overburdened wastewater systems, and a lot of them have combined sewer systems. So not only is the wastewater treatment facility in your city or county probably aging and in need of some serious TLC and repair and probably has a hard time managing those kind of bulkier food waste items. It also might have a combined overflow system, which basically means that in severe rain events, doesn't even have to be that severe to be honest, but in precipitation events, the water kind of channeling and water conveyance, wastewater conveyance systems overflow and overflow into waterways. So if you ever see a sign next to a river in your town that, you know, um, uh, like keep clear of water in rainstorm event or like sewer overflow. Uh, that's basically what's happening is the wastewater and water from your sink, for instance, is is overflowing into a waterway when the, the system is being kind of supercharged and it has too much volume to handle. So we really want to be cautious and not direct extra material down into the wastewater treatment facility system wastewater system if it doesn't have to be, especially if it's in an older combined sewer system area, knowing that in those rain events or precipitation events that it's going to go directly into a waterway and that food waste won't be managed. It'll just end up in the environment, which is a worst case scenario. Better for it to be contained in a landfill or waste to energy facility and be in the trash than to end up in a river and not be processed and managed sustainably in any way, shape or form. So on a good day, maybe it does get to that wastewater treatment facility, does get anaerobically digested, and that digestate is used and land applied in an agricultural operation. But on a bad day, on a rainy day, it might just end up into your local waterway, which is a worst case scenario. Uh, but it's a really good question that I think a lot of people ask as they start to think more about managing their food waste sustainably. They have multiple options available to them in hopefully a lot of the country, hopefully more parts of the country than others um, uh, as we move forward. And um, a really good one, I think, of, you know, what is the best option knowing I have many? But I would love to hear from you what you do with your food waste and other organic materials. Do you bring it to a drop off? Do you direct it to a composting facility, an anaerobic digestion facility? Is it the same for you at work or home? Uh, if you have any questions about the topic, I would be so curious to hear them. Feel free, as always, to drop a question or leave a comment right under this video on Waste360's website or to reach out over Twitter at Char Dreisen, C H A R D R E I Z E N, or on Insta at Char Recycles. Thanks so much.